Let's talk about starting an army for the Emperor's own Golden Guardians of Terror with an overview of collecting Adeptus Custodes in 10th edition 40k. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today I thought I'd do an update on my start collecting video for Adeptus Custodes, now we've got a brand new edition of the game. If you're thinking about collecting an army of golden armoured superhuman warriors to defend terror against all threats, then hopefully this might be some help, and in the video we'll cover a fair bit, talking through why you might want to collect Adeptus Custodes in the first place, some planning that you could potentially go down when trying to get an army together, a few ideas of first purchases and the Custodes range, and some thoughts on expanding it into a full army for the faction. Loads to talk about, so let's jump straight in. For lore and background, the Adeptus Custodes are basically the Emperor's own Space Marine Legion more or less, often said to be as much above a regular Space Marine as a regular Space Marine is above a human, pretty much the best troops that the Imperium can possibly offer, every single warrior basically a hero in his own right, and equipped with the best war gear that the Imperium can muster golden auramite plate, and technological marvels that even the Adeptus Mechanicus might envy. The 10,000 typically serve as the guardians of terror and the throne world. In the chaos that is the Imperium, they're one thing that stands resolute against the forces of Xenos and Chaos, should any force try to behead the Imperium. Though in the Indomitus era, Rebute Gilliman has mobilised them somewhat to take a bit more of a proactive role in their defence, seeking to eliminate and destroy certain threats before they happen, and task forces of the Custodes are dispatched across the galaxy with far more frequency than they used to be. In war, the Custodians are pretty much always outnumbered, but never outmatched, and typically make battle with fairly small compact strike forces of infantry, bikes and dreadnoughts, a glorious golden armoured shield host that strikes forward at the heart of the enemy army, dispatching all before it with blows from their crackling guardian spears. In Warhammer 40k currently, their miniatures have a fairly small range, at least from the Games Workshop Plastics point of view, where basically their entire army is made up of just a few core plastic kits, the Custodian Guard, the Wardens, Terminators, Jet Bikes and Sisters of Silence. They also have a few character miniatures like Trajan Valoris, and can use a few bits of more generic space marine equipment such as the Land Raider. Otherwise though, and kind of oddly for Warhammer 40k, Custodes only really feel like a bit more of a well-rounded army when you include the Forge World models, now listed just as 15 plus age resin on the Warhammer.com web store. And the pricey Forge World resin side of the army has its own options for dreadnoughts, tanks, and a bunch of contingencies of infantry, several of them kind of mirroring the plastic range. In general miniatures wise, the Custodes are perhaps seen as one of the most easy armies to collect in Warhammer 40k from an ease of access point of view. Due to being ridiculously elite, you don't really need all that many models for them, just a few big chunky ones. It means that they're fairly easy to store, transport, and just paint them up and get them on the table in the first place. As a result, Adeptus Custodes are quite a popular faction out there. For just a few examples out of their miniatures range, here are the standard Custodian Guard front and centre here, infantry with chunky toughness 6 profiles, 2 plus saves and lots of wounds, a couple at the back have the Guardian Spears, there's two at the front with the Presidium Shield and Sentinel Blades, and the one on the left bears the Vexilla for the unit, Trajan Valoris is the High Lord of Terror and the character that you can see on the top left, pretty much Commander in Chief of the Custodes, and on the right you can see the Sinister Sisters of Silence, the other talent of the Emperor that fights alongside the Custodes, the Sisters of Silence are some of the premier anti psyker forces in the galaxy, their nullification abilities making enemy warp magic fail in their midst. These are prosecutors bearing the bolters, they can assemble the kit as vigilators with the great blades or witch seekers with flamers. Here are a few examples from the Forge World side of the army. On the top left, there's a Caladius Grav tank with some heavy anti tank firepower. Custodes do get some of the best and most unusual technology in the Imperium. Centrally is the Telamon Heavy Dreadnought, which I think is really quite a cool miniature. Fancy golden armour and some massive heavy firepower and his Telamon Cestus in his left hand. And on the top right are the Aquilon Terminators, a variant from the more standard Alarus that you can get in plastic. Being Forge World Resin, all of these are priced really quite significantly more expensive compared with the rest of the Custodes range. Price wise though, I'd say it's largely good news for the Custodes. If you do pretty much stick to the Games Workshop plastic kits as the majority of your force, then they are pretty much the cheapest army to collect in Warhammer 40k. In particular kits like the Warden Standard Custodian Guard and the Virtus Praetors get you an enormous amount of points on the board for how much they cost, at least relative to other factions. If you do go too heavy into the Forge World resin though, then that probably is going to balance that out quite a lot. Forge World has a reputation for being expensive what it is, and you can't get it at third party discount retailers. 
in game for their playstyle. The Adeptus Custodes tend to be indomitable, very hard to kill, and have some mighty melee. Perhaps most classically tending to just stride up the board with a whole load of custodian guards with guardian spears or various different variants of them, laughing off a lot of enemy small arms damage and only going down to the highest caliber weapons and then generally dealing most of their damage in the fight phase, though a few things do have some powerful shooting like those Caladius tanks. In the fight phase they have their martial katar rule that allows you to adopt different stances depending on what sort of foes you most want to try and fight. Generally quite a flexible boost to mean that they're always going to be quite efficient against their right targets or a little bit better at surviving with the minus one to hit stance. Currently while the Adeptus Custodius started out as one of the strongest armies in the game at the start of 10th edition it does look like they're perhaps on the lower end of the power level scale at the moment. They're generally seen as one of the weaker armies in the game. Following a few big points and rules changes by Games Workshop that reined in their power from their height at the start of 10th, I feel like they're probably to the extent where they're notably weak at the moment though, and given that Games Workshop will have another balance update in January, I'd be kind of surprised if the Adeptus Custodes didn't have some improvements to some of their units at that point. The strongest and the weakest armies in 40k rarely seem to stay the same way for long though, so it's not really the biggest concern in my opinion. In any case, as armies go, I feel like Adeptus Custodes have really quite a lot going for them. A pretty snazzy and fairly cheap range of plastic miniatures that can be very easy to paint up, and a fairly chunky and maybe fairly easy playstyle in game that doesn't really require too much in depth thought. They've definitely got a lot of advantages over other factions if you did want to start collecting them. If you're looking to find out a bit more about the faction, there's loads of places that you can look. I'll probably have a read over Index Custodies if you want to find out the game rules, that's freely downloadable at time of recording from Games Workshop or you could pick up the index cards if you can find them about in your area. Otherwise, Battlescribe and Warhopedia have a copy of the rules as well, and Games Workshop's 40k app. You can always try before you buy, trying out things like Tabletop Simulator or Proxy Models in-game for a test game or two. Can be worth it if you want to have an idea as to how you can play with the army before you actually commit to the purchases. And there's plenty of stuff on social media as well. Here on YouTube, there's a load of content, I made a few Custodius videos already, including a tier list and an overall index overview, but there's crazy amounts of content from all sorts of other creators. You'll find battle reports, painting guides, and lore in abundance on other channels out there. There are some 40k channels that do tend to focus really quite heavily on collecting and playing Custodius as well, so well worth a search. Otherwise, I'd also recommend just checking in with the various Custodius social media groups. You could think about joining Custodius Discord servers, Facebook groups or subreddits, of which there are one for each of those I believe. You can just absorb quite a lot of vague collecting and gaming knowledge just by having a read over what other people are talking about, and it can be a nice way to ask some basic questions to people who already play the faction. For other things you can think about, you could also try and imagine what sort of army you might want to wind up with. Doesn't really hurt to let things grow organically, though if you just wanted to draft out a rough 1000 point or 2000 point list and what you need to get to get there, that might at least give you a little bit of direction. Custodians tend to play at least pretty heavily into the whole elite infantry direction, as that's basically most of their models in one way or another. If you go dipping heavily into Forge World, then you can potentially make armies that are more focused on their tanks and dreadnoughts, I guess, and they have been strong in the past. Currently, with the size of their plastic range at least, given their fairly small unit pool that they have access to, it's maybe not too hard to get your hands on one copy of most of the units that they can field and that might not be the worst way to start to build yourself up some options as you go along. For paint schemes, in general custodians tend to go in for gold in one way or another, but it's absolutely not mandatory if you prefer something else. In the law, custodians generally fight as part of various different shield hosts, and they might don armour of a different colour suited to certain tasks, for example the shadow keepers on the right here being the guardians of the imperial prison system and high value individuals they need to capture and drag back for interrogation for one reason or another. Or there's the emissaries imperatus who are often dispatched as small forces to advise or announce the emperor's will on far flung battlefields and might fight as an ally to another force. You certainly can go down one of these more prescribed colour schemes, or just stick to the standard box art style one, or go for something a bit more wild and crazy. I've personally painted up a whole bunch of custodies in a purplish colour scheme, though people keep on telling me it looks like Emperor's Children. For painting up a test model, I'd probably go for something just like a standard custodian guard, maybe a bit more of a lower value miniature if you do happen to make mistakes or want to revise your colour scheme in one way or another, rather than something a bit more high value and expensive like this blade champion here and decide what sort of colour scheme you're going to go for for the model. There really are quite a lot of ways that you can go about making a gold colour scheme happen, 
and you can make the colour really quite bright and brash or dark and muted depending on what you paint them as. There's certainly an army that you can get miniatures on the table really quite quickly though, just giving them a gold spray over in Retributor armour, washed with something like Agrax Earthshade or a different shade of your choice. Maybe dry brush and highlight a bit with a bit of a silvery tinted paint perhaps, and you can get something that looks really quite effective really quite quickly. Talking of first miniature purchases though, I'd probably be most tempted to either start with Combat Patrol Adeptus Custodes, your discount box for the faction, or maybe a standard box of Custodian Guard if you only want to invest a limited bit and dip a toe in and paint up a few models to see if you like them. Starting out with the Combat Patrol box, in this one you get 5 Custodian Guard, 3 Virtus Praetor Jet Bikes, and then 10 Sisters of Silence that can be built up as either the Prosecutors, Vigilators, or Witch Seekers depending on armaments. The Combat Patrol box is £95, £125, Euros, or £160, US dollars, around about a 35% discount compared with buying these kits separately, which isn't really too bad seeing as I'd already consider the Custodius models to be fairly good value as a Games Workshop goes. In the box set with a fairly basic loadout, you'd be typically getting around about 670 points worth of miniatures on the board here. That would be a little bit over 4 points per dollar, which is generally above the vast majority of other factions out there. If you build up a few of the miniatures as more characters, which you could do, then it could be even more than that. As unit mix go, I think that it's certainly pretty reasonable to start out with three of the five main Custodius plastic kits. Maybe my only criticism might be that it's just a little bit heavy on the Sisters of Silence compared with what I would have gone for myself. Still though, Custodian Guard are pretty much always going to be relevant as the central troops choice battle line unit of the army. I think they're usable in game currently. The Virtus Praetor bikes are really quite cool models and are maybe just a touch underpowered right now. There's always possibility for that to change in the future though. And in general I'd say that a few units of Sisters of Silence are generally a positive to have in the army. Perhaps more for just doing more grunt work with small squads that Custodias are a bit too expensive for. Things like capturing home objectives or running around and doing secondary type actions maybe. Definitely helpful to have around. Overall it is really quite a solid box I think. And if you were starting a Custodius collection from scratch, I think it's definitely one that you could justify buying more than one copy of. Could allow you some good options for a range of the different Sisters of Silence units. As per normal when buying Warhammer 40k miniatures, if you're newer to the hobby, then I'd certainly recommend knowing the other options that are available to you, besides directly from the Games Workshop Warhammer web store. That can often be the most reliable, but also often the most expensive. If going for new plastics, I'd usually try and purchase through local gaming stores. They often give some pretty nice discount on Warhammer miniatures. Element Games in the UK is usually 10 to 20% off Warhammer, as will be links down in the video description. And also places like Fenris Workshop in Canada and Gap Games in Australia, 10 and 20% off normally respectively. The links down there are affiliate links as well, so anything bought through them does help to support all specs tactics, though it's at no extra cost to yourselves if you do buy anything, and it does save quite a lot of money compared with buying direct. Otherwise, for really trying to economise, you could take a look at the second-hand market. eBay could be another way to land a whole load more golden boys for the tabletop. Model quality can be pretty variable, of course, but can save a lot of time, effort, and money if that's a factor. And of course there are the Beyond Games Workshop avenues, lots of people make alternative sculpts both for 3D printing or just third party manufacturers. I have seen a fair amount of sculpts out there that are clearly meant to be Custodius proxies. Just searching things like Custodius proxy miniature recommendations in Google would probably give you a good start there. In particular I do see some people using those quite a lot for the Forge World range. Otherwise take a look at the kits in a bit more detail. This is the Custodian Guard kit. £37.50, 50 euros or $60, so basically the same sort of price as other faction troops for five really big chunky golden boys. Currently for how I'd be tempted to assemble them in game, I feel like both the Guardian Spears and the Shield and Sword loadouts are pretty usable. The Shield gives you an extra wound, but the Guardian Spears give you a lot more melee power. I'd be more tempted to skew slightly towards the Guardian Spears over the Shields, but I have seen plenty of people run mixed squads with a bit of both. I'd say at the moment it's probably worth having one Vexilla per squad, given that it gives you extra objective control, and it might well be worth magnetising the offhand weapon of the Vexilla so you can swap them about a bit if you can be bothered to. Otherwise, this is the box set that allows you to build the standard shield captain. He's got the choice of either the Sentinel Blaze and the Dagger, as you can see, modelled here at the front, and he can take a shield or the Guardian Spear as well. I'd say out of one of the first kits of these that you pick up, it's probably worth assembling one to represent this guy. It is quite nice to get an HQ choice basically in the box of standard issue troops, given that they often sell them for something like £25 individually for one model. 
and that's another reason that the custodies tend to be a bit cheaper than others. The same goes for their Terminators and jet bike captains. Otherwise, for potential cheaper starts to the Custodes range, you could think about the other past discount box sets that they've had. The one on the left here is the Watchers of the Gate box set, which was last year's Christmas Battle Force box for the Custodes. This one was a truly excellent deal to get into the faction if you had chance to pick it up at something near its regular price. Though in general, these were really popular, sold out quite quickly. I feel like anything you find out of them is probably going to be at a bit of a markup now. I did think it was a pretty excellent kit though. Three sets of Custodian Guard, Trajan, some Jet Bikes and some Terminators. It was pretty crazy that you could basically have 1400 points worth of Warhammer from one box set there. That's far higher than normal. The Boarding Patrol from earlier in 2023 was pretty interesting as well. That one maybe felt like a bit of a slims down offering of the Watchers in the Gate box set. Trajan Valoris, three Terminators and one squad of Custodian Guard. Again it was a very reasonable deal and it does pair pretty well with the Combat Patrol as well. Otherwise, for expanding the army, I'd probably think about picking up one copy of each of the plastic kits in the faction at some point early-ish on. There's the Alaris Custodian Terminators here on the left with some powerful close-range shooting, and they are pretty dangerous against character or monster type units. Currently, I'd say that the Guardian Spear is a bit more dangerous than the Castell and Axe for them, and the same for the Custodian Wardens that you can see here on the right, kind of similar sculpts to the regular Custodian Guard, but have the options of axes and the loincloth type things. Perhaps some subtly different elites for the faction there. They're really quite strong in game with their big tanky feel no pain type save. Otherwise the Virtus Praetors with their cool eagle jet bikes I think are really quite nice models. Not really too many options when you assemble them besides one of them can count as a shield captain if you'd like to. The flying bases maybe aren't too ideal for those guys. I think in general you might want to do something like get a flight stem and magnetise them onto that or some people have some pinning sort of systems in the bottom of those. I don't really rate the Games Workshop flight stand that much for them though. Finally there's the Sisters of Silence. As I said definitely worth having some about for more grunt work and actions and objectives and things. At the moment I definitely want to acquire those via getting the Combat Patrol box set given that they're kind of expensive for what they are individually. I'll probably look to assemble my first one of those as some prosecutors with the bolters. Then maybe either more Prosecutors or some Witch Seekers. The Vigilators have just generally always been kind of niche in 40k. Often just trying to do what the standard Custodians do, but not quite as well because they're really easy to kill. Otherwise the faction has some character miniatures. Trajan Valoris, the Blade Champion, and the combined box set of Valerian and Alea on the right. I think Trajan Valoris' miniature is really quite a nice one. And he's quite a lot of points in game as well, so it does fill out another big chunk of your army if you do pick him up. After these, I'd rate Valoris and the Blade Champion probably a bit above Valyrian. Finally, for Forge World options, they do have really quite a lot of choice. Perhaps out of that range, my favourite models might be the unique Contempt Draculus and Galatus Dreadnoughts, the Caladius Dreadnought and the Telamon Heavy one. And I do quite like the Venatari Custodians as well. They look pretty cool with their jetpacks. The pricing on these does tend to be really quite jarring compared with the rest of the range though. Games Workshop's Forge World Resin Caladius will set you back £108 for one fairly standard size vehicle. Kind of laughable that that's around about double the cost of say something like a standard Primaris Repulsor which is similar size if not bigger. And just out and about in the wild I have seen Custodius Forge World things proxied by 3D printed stuff more than just about anything else around. There are quite a lot of people who've made STL files and things for standouts for them. For example, just by typing in Caladius in Colt 3D, I found these two designs here. Obviously not quite the same as the standard Custodian Caladius tank. They need to be a bit different to be distinct, so Games Workshop can't just take them down. But in general, in my experience, a lot of people seem kind of happy to have a slightly different flavour of fancy grav tank if it saves them a ridiculous amount of money like this. If pricing isn't an issue though, then acquiring some Forge World Custodies over a long drawn out period still might not be the worst thing in the world. At least the plastic core of the army should be pretty cheap to assemble. And I guess if you really wanted to have all options available, you could slowly add pricey resin to it from there. Otherwise, for what's working at the moment in game for Custodies, that might incentivise you to pick up some certain miniatures a little bit sooner than others. There's always a scope of just collecting what you like in Warhammer 40k though, as rules and points do change over time particularly with Custodes new codex on the way in Spring 24. For the core of the army to start off with though, I feel like people would be hard pressed to go too far wrong with a few units of Custodian Guard, Wardens or Terminators, plenty of damage on the Guardian Spear battle line, some Sisters of Silence to capture objectives, and if you had to go for any one thing out of the Forge World Resin variety, the Caladius tanks are perhaps the most important unit that they've got in there at the moment. 
They were really quite strong before the points increases, and they were one of the only things that didn't get adjusted by Games Workshop at the last balance pass. They're quite good for tank busting things, otherwise could look at some Imperial allies as well. The Kalidus Assassin in particular tends to be quite a good and popular choice for secondary objectives. I probably have a rough idea of a 2000 point list to build towards, and as you get some models painted up, get some games in, and get a bit more of a feel for what works and what doesn't. Finally, for getting games in, I think it's worth talking about the rules for the army. At the moment, Index Adeptus Custodes is freely downloadable on Warhammer Community under the download section of Warhammer 40k. They are also posted to Warpedia or Games Workshop's Warhammer app for reference at the moment. You could maybe think about trying to pick up some Custodes Index cards as well, quick reference cards for the entirety of the army. They'll be valid till the Codex comes out in Spring 2024, where I feel like there's a good chance that at least some rules and stat lines for the army are likely to change. Can be handy enough visual references if you're just learning the faction and want to have the rules right to hand rather than on your phone or something. Otherwise you could look at picking up some past codexes for past lore and things like that. They tend to be fairly cheap and could give you something to read as you're getting an army together, though their rules will be out of date there. And then at the moment, Adeptus Custodes players are awaiting their codex release, which will be out in Spring 2024, officially announced by Games Workshop already, and guaranteed to have at least one miniature come out alongside it. As with other 10th edition codex releases, the main thing that it's likely to bring are different detachments and ways to play. There might be things that might encourage you to really heavily go down the route of one unit, maybe something that rewards bikes and flying things perhaps, or Terminator armies. Or there might be detachments that try and push you into the theme and playstyle of some of the various shield hosts, perhaps some shock teleport assault forces of the dread host maybe, or a fast moving infantry strike force of the emissaries imperatus. I certainly wouldn't wait for this though, 40k's rules are changing all the time, and in the meantime you can start getting together the core of the army so you're ready to go when the book comes out. I guess there is technically one custodius datasheet that might be at risk at the moment with the venerable contempt to dreadnought model, Unless Games Workshop release a unique sculpt for that themselves, there's at least a chance that that could go to Legends, as they don't have an official 40k miniature for it, and it would be a bit of a shame if that were lost. I feel like a plastic Dreadnought Contemptor kit for the Custodes would be really high on a lot of players' wish lists. In the meantime though, the core mechanics of the army are these, and I wouldn't expect them to change enormously. The Martial Qatar is their central faction rule, and it's the one that allows them to adopt different stances in the fight phase, kind of doubly down cementing them as a more melee army than a ranged one. At the start of the fight phase you get to pick Captaris, Dakatari or Rendax, and you get to either have minus one to hit in combat, sustained hits one in melee, or lethal hits. In general from the way that the math breaks down on that, you generally want to use sustained hits if you're wounding on a 3+, or lethal hits if you're wounding on a 5+, plus, at least in the majority of your combats across the board. If it happens to be your opponent's turn and they've charged you with some really hard hitting melee units, you're probably best off going Captaris, just to hopefully allow more custodians to live for the strike back, which is probably going to be more valuable. Otherwise, the shield host special rule is Agent of the Emperor, which gives you feel no pain against mortal wounds. That took a really big blow when Games Workshop changed it to not work against devastating wounds. And I'd say that the Custodes currently have some pretty powerful stratagems going for them. 2 CP to fight first could make some units borderline unchargeable for certain enemies. Very pricey to access though. There's a 1 command point 1 for a plus 1 to wound monsters and vehicles, which is very nasty. 2 CP for minus 1 damage, which is a battle tactic. Could make for a very tanky shield block with a shield captain perhaps. And finally a very nice and reliable value 1 for 1 CP to revive a custodian from death. You can use that once per unit per game, and one command point turned into 50 points or more worth of models is generally a pretty reasonable trade. They definitely feel like a faction that's got quite a lot of strain on their command points and which way they're going to go, being able to access very powerful things, but at a cost. Finally, to put this all together in just one idea of what a 2000 point Custodes army list could look like, this is just one high placed in Custodes army from recent times. Taken as one example of Custodes doing well recently from Best Coast pairings, this one was by Derek Holder using it to come 5th at Lightly Salted 4 GT, going 4 and 1 against a field of 35 players. As mentioned before, competitive Custodes armies are having a bit of a rough time of it at the moment, but it seems that they're not completely out of the running. The list is headed up by Trajan Valoris, who's leading a squad of 5 Custodian Wardens with Guardian Spears, and that will be just a remarkably tanky unit, minus 1 to wound, and their 4 plus fill no pain once per game, plus the ability to fight first from Trajan's moment shackle, just very intimidating all around. Then there are three smallish units of Alaris Terminators, two units of three and one of two, all with Guardian Spears, 
pretty punchy for being able to handle heavier targets like monsters and vehicles with their special rules, and they can teleport across the board. Then there's two units of three of the jump pack custodies, the Venatari with their lances. They're perhaps a bit more balanced than they used to be versus the rest of the index, given that they went down in points. Two units of Sisters of Silence Witch Seekers, the variant with the Flamers, pretty nice for holding down objectives and also threatening some Overwatch and just being generally more damaged than the Prosecutor type. Two Caladius Grav Tanks with the Arachnus Heavy Blaze Cannon for some dedicated anti-armor fire support hitting on a 2+, and finally a Scouting Eversaw Assassin, though an operative's just usually being very handy to have around for not being able to be shot from far away, can be helpful for primaries or secondaries, and he can certainly blend some hordes of enemy infantry that he gets his claws on. Interesting to see what's working for the Custodies at the moment in any case, though I feel like the options that come from the new codex could really quite radically change things around. In any case, hope you've enjoyed a bit of an overview of Adeptus Custodies in 40k. Let me know your thoughts on collecting the faction or any other advice that you'd have for new players down in the comments below. If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics, or I'll certainly keep the regular 40k videos coming. I do tend to post new ones just about every day. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that All Specs Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that linked in the video description if you'd like to help support. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, an enormous thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.